Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Happy Monday, Astro Lovers, and welcome to another week of Straight Up Astrology, where you get your weekly cosmic weather report in a way that everyone can understand. (laughs) I am your astrologer, Graham Breitenstein, creator and founder of Drunk Astrology, and if you don't already... Follow me on the Instagrams. It's at Drunk Astrology. If you haven't received a birth chart reading before, it's at DrunkAstro.com. Duh. <laughs> Welcome to the Cosmic Weather Report for the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2021. And baby, 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 we have got a week ahead of us. And we're actually... You know what? We've got a several few weeks ahead of us because why? If this is the first time you're listening to this podcast, it's eclipse season. And even if you needed that reminder, it's eclipse season. For the next five weeks, 
anything goes in the cosmos, especially in the Gemini Sagittarius areas of your chart. Those of you who got your 2021 Planet by the Planets reading know what to expect and where to expect the planetary turbulence. But for those of you who don't, if you've got your birth chart, make sure you take a look. Take a look at Gemini and Sagittarius in your chart. You might have some planets. You're definitely going to have some houses ruled by those two signs. So take a look, and then you can start to see, like, aha, that's where the evolution's taking place. That's where the changes are taking place. And remember, this eclipse season is chapter three of a story that began last year, May, June, and early July of 2020, a story or several stories began for you last summer. So I want you to think about those those months, May, June especially, and then even uh, early July. And then chapter two of the story, the evolution, the next step in changing and evolving the story or stories began last summer, took place November, December under the next set of eclipses. And now here we are, May, June of 2021, and now we're here for chapter three. How has the story evolved? Has it changed in a way that you like, that you want it to? Is there progress or have we gone back to negative patterns or have we gone back to something that we don't like the first iteration of this story might have been very wild and very rocky let's all remember what the world was going through last summer last winter here in the states of course the election was last winter and then social justice and reform was a major theme last summer. So that was the backdrop to the the world was the backdrop. But what was going on in your life? Where was all of that turbulence taking place in your life? And if you look at the Gemini Sagittarius areas of your chart, planets and houses, you're going to start seeing like, oh, that's what that is. And if you don't know your chart, go to drunkastro.com, click on the pull your chart tab, and you'll be able to just put your birth your birth, birth info into the calculator and you'll get your chart. It might look like hieroglyphics if you're a first timer. That's what readings are for. That's I help you I hope you understand what that looks like, but just know too that it took years for me to understand like looking at a wheel and going, "Oh, now I get it." Okay, I used to I used to shy away from the wheel because I was like, mm, no, 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 no. I don't know what that is, but like I don't even want to know what that is. And then come to find out that that's that's where all the that's where all the juice is. That's where all the like, mm, all the nuances of a chart in a person. Oh, it's all there. The timing of things all happens in that wheel. So if you don't if you don't understand your wheel, don't fret. That's what a reading is for. I help you break that down. Um, but. So here, so here we are. We're here in this chapter three of this eclipse story, and we're building up to next week's, on Wednesday, the Sagittarius lunar eclipse. It's the first of two eclipses that are going to be taking place during this season. So we're building up to it, right? We're, we're, we're transitioning from the Taurus new moon last week. Uh, well, hold on. Let me make sure. Let me let me find my let me find my dates. Let me make sure my dates are right. Yeah, boom, done. Yeah, last Tuesday the eleventh, there was a new moon in Taurus at twelve p.m. That was Tuesday the eleventh. And now here we are at the halfway point, and now we are Wednesday will actually be the the halfway point. We'll talk about that in a second when we talk about the moon, and then next Wednesday we have our first of two eclipses for this season. So just you know, put on your put on your seatbelt because it's gonna be a wild ride. Now, what makes this eclipse season more potent is that we're in right in the middle of it. We're gonna throw in a Mercury retrograde in Gemini. Now, okay, here's here's a few things. Mercury and Gemini are really happy Mercury because it's one of the signs of its rulership. Okay, so 
Mercury rules Gemini and Mercury rules Virgo. So when Mercury is in either one of those signs, he's a really happy guy. He's a really happy camper. In Gemini, he's more fun, flirty, zippy, and, and curious, asking questions like, well, it could be this or it could be that. He loves variety and he loves options. He's also a trickster when he's in Gemini. So you have to really pay attention. And if you're hearing if you're hearing Gemini, you should be going, wait a minute. The eclipses are in Gemini Sagittarius, but now Mercury retrograde is taking place in Gemini at the same time. Yes, folks, this is layered. Venus is in Gemini also, and this week the sun will shift into Gemini. So happy birthday to the Geminis out there. Even though a couple of you broke my heart, it's fine. I still love Gemini energy. I have a lot. I have a lot of, I know a lot of Geminis, but I have a few Gemini friends that I'm like, yeah, y'all are the sh-ish. <laughs> Watch your mouth, Graham. It's only Monday. Um, but this Mercury retrograde in Gemini, which we're in the shadow period right now. So chapter one of Mercury's retrograde story has already begun. It began on this past Saturday, the 15th. And it's going to continue until next Saturday, the 29th, when he stations to go retrograde. So pay attention to the ghost from your past. Pay attention from themes. Pay attention... Just think about, like, who are you thinking about? You know, I, wow, I haven't thought of that person in forever. I haven't seen that person in forever. You may have already noticed that people or themes from your past are starting to creep into your mind. Mercury is our thinking mind. It's our communicating mind. It's, it's how we exchange ideas and information. So when our thinking mind, when Mercury's in the sign of our thinking mind and taking us back, we're going to start reflecting and we're going to start, you know, we're physically going to start revisiting people as the world begins to open up more and more. Gemini rules friends, close friends. You know, we're going to be starting to reconnect, reunite, revisit all your favorite RE words. But this also means that he can confuse the hell out of us with these eclipses. We might be making major, major decisions or major moves without all the information or without considering all the possible outcomes if we move in a certain way. So while eclipses already bring us this false sense of urgency, like, if I don't do it now, I, it'll never happen. Or if I don't do it now, I just have to do it now. No matter what, it doesn't matter. I just got to do it. I encourage you to slow down. I encourage you to gather information. And I really encourage you, depending, depending on your situation, I can't weigh in on everyone's situation because I don't know everybody that's listening to this podcast. Okay, now once I do readings for all of you, then I can start to, you know, go like, oh, yep, I would say, no, 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 not, not, I wouldn't do that for you. Or, yep, that's the move. You should definitely move that way. But until that point, I can't do that. But I encourage you to allow and to slow down and just say, you know what? I'm going to let this reveal itself to me. I'm not going to try and latch on and try to control the outcome. I'm not going to latch on and try and just keep things where they are because I'm desperate to keep them where they are because I don't like change and I'm very uncomfortable when things get frenetic. I hate to tell you, with all the Gemini energy in the sky for the next few weeks, everything's just going to be frenetic and wiry. So if you're a control type, a little bit of a control freak, I'm going to encourage you to actually do the opposite, to un, unleash your grip and step back and go, you know what? It's better if I see this situation play itself out without me trying to control it because that's the truth of the situation. That's the most honest way 
of things of things playing out is if I step back and go, okay, I'm going to consider the fact that if I try and influence this situation, that maybe things are okay and stable for the time being, but might. I might just be trying to tame a wild beast that's not meant to be trained. I hope that metaphor makes sense for you. But th- th- this this is a th- this is a very layered time in in the cosmos. Um and also what's encouraging us to slow down is we have a Saturn retrograde uh this week on Sunday Saturn will station to go retrograde. So that's another slowdown. And then next month on June 20th, Jupiter stations retrograde. Okay, so all the outer planets are stopped. You know, Pluto's already stopped and he's already going retrograde in Capricorn. But now Saturn stops. Mercury is slowing down to stop next week. Next month, Jupiter stops. So we've got this, we've got this planetary halt that's going, okay, the 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 silver lining here including mercury retrograde is that the retrogrades encourage us to wind down to reflect to pause to go okay as far as mercury goes let me gather as much information as i can before i make any major moves or any major decisions I'm going to gather as much information. I'm going to do as much research as I can. I'm going to have as, you know, conversations with, you know, anyone, anyone that might be able to weigh in on what the right move will be for me. Okay? And a lot, a lot of that's internal dialogue too. There's a lot of I, you know, reflecting within yourself like, okay, how do I how do I want to how do I want to handle this? What's the best what's the best move for my evolution? You know, so that I'm always in a in a forward motion and I'm not going back. Right? Think about May, June, early July last year, right? I mean, we were all in the 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 COVID story and we're all seeing how that's now. Here we are chapter 3 and things are starting to open up. Mask mandates are starting to to to, to go away. And, you know, there's responses and reactions to that, you know, that, that all over. But, um, you know, you see, you see how that is, you see how that's changed and how that's moving. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Saturn's retrograde in a second. But what I do want to do uh, before is talk about the moons. Now, before I talk about the moons, with this Mercury retrograde shadow, I believe I mentioned it, but I just want to make sure I'm very clear. Mercury and his retrograde shadow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat myself just to make sure I said what I wanted to say. Chapter one of his retrograde story started Saturday the fifteenth, right? So just two days ago. If you're listening to this on Monday the seventeenth, because that's when I'm recording it. And now from the 15th through the 29th, that is chapter one. He's giving you the preview of his retrograde story, right? The people, the players, the ideas, the friends, anyone that's just, that's popping up over these next um, one, two, two weeks leading up to the 29th. And then on the 29th, he'll station retrograde, and then he's going to move into the bulk of the story. That's going to be where all the action really starts to play out. So, you know, even when it comes to your tech devices, make sure that you're backing up all your tech devices, your phones, your laptops, anything with a battery, your car, whatever you got to do to get ahead of the curve. You know, start handling those things now. If you are in need of a new device or any kind of tech, I would do it sooner than later. Um, I, If you're a Virgo or Gemini, you might not want to do it at all. Uh, we tend to get more – we tend to be more affected by these things in, in, in the Mercury retrogrades in the shadow periods. Not that we don't feel it during the, the hunk of the story too. We do. But we tend to start getting all the action on day one of shadow periods, okay? 
Um, but for the, the rest of you that don't have as Mercury ruled charts as Virgos and Geminis do, I would get those things sooner than later. Because if you get it during a retrograde, unless you have, if, if you're born with a natal Mercury retrograde, then you know that it could be a time of actually moving forward. For the rest of us, we're having to, we're having to like slow down, reflect, move, you know, uh, revise, re edit, and you know, take a step back. Um, and then, so chapter two of Mercury's story is going to be from. May 29th to June 21st, or June 22nd, sorry. Uh, th that's going to be chapter two of his story, right? Of reviewing, reflection, uh, revisiting, reuniting, all your RE words, just, you know, rethinking. Um, and then he'll finish up his story June 22nd until he moves into Cancer. I believe that is July 11th. Um, so that that's, that's what Mercury's up to. So eclipses and mercury's retrograde and now we're going to throw in saturn's retrograde they're all blanketed on top of this week right and and mercury and eclipses are going to be blanketed on top of the next several weeks okay and the thing about saturn station on sunday is that saturn's one of the big outer planets and we feel him five days before and five days after so that means on tuesday we're going to start to feel Saturn slow down. And then we're going to start, we're going to be feeling that all the way through next week on Thursday, where we clear his, his retrograde station fog, and then he starts backing up. And we're going to talk about some important dates with him in just, in just a second. Uh, you know what? Hey. Mercury's got me inspired. Let's just talk about his dates right now. Saturn is, of course, in Aquarius, and he first entered his retrograde shadow on Valentine's Day. So February 14th, Saturn started his slowdown. It started, you know, if you look at the Aquarius area of your chart, planets, houses, you start going, oh, Saturn is definitely slowing down there. or And he's great. For if, if you're a little overly ambitious, if you're doing too much at once, Saturn is good to slow you down. So if you feel like you've got a lot on your plate, but you're just you're moving a lot slower. One, it's the the year of the metal ox, and that's just the vibe. But also, Saturn really does halt you and say, "Okay, you got to get better about organization. You got to get better at." at moving, you know, getting more detailed, being more disciplined, holding yourself accountable, holding those around you accountable. So he's been he's been doing this this slow and steady foot on the brake since February 14th, but then on the 17th of February, he had his first of 3 squares to Uranus. We talked about this in the the 2021 webinar in January. And those of you uh, who got the 2021 Planet by the Planets reading, you know where this is shaking things up in your chart. So he had his first square to Uranus. That midsection of February was hyperactive. And if you go back and look back, what was going on? What conversations were you having? What were you thinking about? How did, your, how did the foundation of your life get rocked? Now that's chapter one of that story. Well, now that Saturn stations retrograde on Sunday, the 23rd of May, next month, he's going to have his second pass squaring Uranus on June 14th. So now he's going back to mid-February, and he's going to say, okay, now I, I told you that you should, you should change this or that this was how your, your foundation was going to rock. So now, what changes did you make? Were they the right changes? Because now I'm, you know, Uranus is that that unexpected change agent. He, where Saturn likes tradition and rules and discipline, Uranus says, "Bump your rules. I'm gonna do it my way, and I want to do it this way, this new, innovative way." And you might be a little scared. You might be a little scared if you think back to mid-February, like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a really 
that's a really out there approach or that's really out there for me. I don't know if I can do it well. You're going to have two more passes of this energy in the same areas of your chart. Thanks to Saturn and Uranus squaring each other two more times this year. So we're getting chapter two next month. So if you can't tell, eclipse season is really wild. Um, And then Saturn on October 10th, he will station direct. And then on December 23rd, he has his third and final square to Uranus. So I just think back, okay, where as we're building up to Mercury's retrograde next Saturday, the 29th, not not this coming. I want you to think back to mid-February and think about what was going on, who was around, what was what was on your plate, who were the players, what were you thinking about, like, oh wow, I don't know if I could do that. Because now you're gonna you're gonna be revisiting maybe the need to do whatever that is for you. Okay, now we can talk about the moons. So today, it's all, if you don't follow the moon, I would definitely uh, start doing that because the moon really sets the, sets the daily vibe because it changes signs. It's the fastest moving body up there, changes signs every two and a half days, and it really sets the tone for each day. And the closing aspect that I'm going to read to you really defines, okay, then these next two days are separative or these two days are argumentative or these two are really juicy, productive days. Um, but they really, it really helps to say like, I should do this on this day, but I shouldn't do it on this day. Um, so without further ado, today, Monday the 17th, the moon went into Leo at 5.44 a.m. Pacific. All the times I give you are Pacific standard, so adjust for your time zones. And the Leo moon just had a quincunx to Jupiter at 6.29 a.m., and then he is quiet the rest of the day. Then moving on to Tuesday the 18th, the moon is in Leo. He's got a sextile to Venus, a trine to Chiron, a square to Uranus, and an opposition to Saturn. So so if you're up uh, square to Uranus at 4.04 a.m. and an opposition to Saturn at 7.30 a.m. So if you're up tomorrow morning early, you know, you can expect some shakeups or maybe if you're on the West Coast or uh, depending on another time zone, wherever you are. You might wake up to some unexpected, just unexpected things on your plate. Um, And then he has a sextile to Mercury at 7.55 p.m., so that's great communication. Great creative, great creative energy when the moon's in Leo. And then Wednesday the 19th, the Leo moon goes void at 12.13 p.m. with a square to the sun, which is also a quarter moon, the halfway point between last week's Taurus new moon and next week's. Sagittarius lunar eclipse. So with the quarter moon and with this Leo moon, you want to ask yourself, are your needs being met? The things that you want to, that you started or initiated under um, last week's Taurus new moon, if you're a manifester, I hope you are. This is now the reminder of saying, okay, like, well, have you done it? I know I haven't acted upon my manifestations under the Taurus new moon. So I know for me, it's like, all right, Graham, you know, I said I was going to get a haircut. I said I was going to get a massage. I said I was going to do all these things to take care of myself because, hello, Taurus new moon, self-care. Um, I haven't done them yet. So now Monday, Tuesday, and uh, first part of Wednesday, great times to go, okay, I said I was going to do this last week. And I wanted to manifest this for myself, and I haven't done Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. 
If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on DrunkAstro.com. There's a whole page there for it, and I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to, I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year. Because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you. And there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. I'm not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming Every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your, your um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by... Using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need, okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. Anything, so let me get on it. Then the moon goes into Virgo Wednesday the 19th at 1.59 p.m. He has an opposition to Jupiter at 3.07 p.m. So Wednesday afternoon, you can find that there's, you know, that there's just, there's a lot of something, you know, the opposition is is clarifying and enlightening. So Virgo moon, though, a lot to do. A lot on your plate. And just in general, this week, is really busy starting tomorrow the 18th. Tuesday through Friday is just really busy as far as the moon goes. The moon is in Virgo the rest of Wednesday afternoon and night, Thursday the 20th, and Friday the 21st going void at 12.56 p.m. with a trine to Pluto. So very, very productive days, Wednesday, Thursday, first part of Friday. Use that Virgo moon to your advantage. If you've got things on the to-do list that you've been putting off, you can trailblaze through them Wednesday, Thursday, Friday under those um, the Virgo moon. Then the moon enters Libra Friday the 21st at 6.35 p.m. 
has an adjusting aspect to Jupiter at 7.59 p.m. That's okay. Just, you know, adjustments within partnerships. You might have a lot to just change or do that's kind of annoying. Um, a beautiful trine to the sun at 8.46 p.m. on Friday. And then the moon's in Libra Saturday and Sunday going void at 2.36 p.m. with a square to Pluto. So the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, first part, the Libra moon, so partnerships are really stressed this coming weekend, okay? So I want you to, I want you to pay attention to where, you know, ask yourself, why is my relationship stressed? Or why is this relationship stressed? How can I, what action do I need to take or does the other person need to take? Or maybe we need to come together and say, collectively, in our partnership, in our union, in our friendship, in our family, whatever your, your relationship dynamic is, this action needs to happen in order to solve the stress, but I need an action. And if I don't get an action, then, you know, th then how are we going to, how are we going to move from here? Is there forward motion? Is this the end of the road? S Square to Pluto is a very deep, it's going deep within your relationships. Okay. So if, if something gets triggered this weekend within, within a partnership dynamic, it might be deeper. You might need to go way below the surface to say, you know what? It's actually not that you didn't call. It's that two years ago you did blah, 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 blah. And now, and I haven't healed from that. I'm not, that's still, that's still a trigger for me or it's still a, a problem for me. Um, so this weekend, a, li a little, a little stress. Um, there are some, there's still some, some decent aspects, you know, this weekend, but the closing aspect of the square to Pluto is is a separative one. Uh, the moon enters Scorpio Sunday at 8 p.m. Has a beautiful trine to Jupiter at 9.37 p.m. And the Scorpio moon Monday, Tuesday goes void at 2.20 p.m. next Tuesday the 25th with a sextile to Pluto. So that's really great. Um, so, you know, going there, going deep. Once the moon shifts into Scorpio Sunday night, you start you start seeing the benefits of having gone there, discussed what was at play, and and getting clear. Now, as far as planetary actions go for the rest of the week, today, Monday the seventeenth, the sun has a trine to Pluto. So a day, talk about a day to go go deep, dig deeper. Uh, today's a great day for that, especially within power dynamics. Uh, your relationship to authority figures, great day for communications, um, and just grounding yourself um, with how you want to move. Uh, of course, I already said it earlier, but Tuesday, we start to feel the Saturn station. Uh, on Wednesday the 19th, Venus has a trine to Saturn at 6.58 p.m., so this is a great day to really get real about what you want to do about, you know, it, whether it's your relationships, Venus is in Gemini, right? So great day to have conversations, um, to really plant uh, a strategy, to put a plan into place. Um, Saturn can, you know, be a little sobering, but Venus in Gemini is fun, flirty, witty, um, you know, and just a great day to, to connect and really, if you're trying to, like, you know, make, make something a little more serious and less like, okay, you know, we've been flirting for a while, um, whatever. But Wednesday is a great day to have one of those conversations. Like, hey, I have a lot of fun with you. What do you think about, like, making this more of, like, a consistent thing or a real thing? You know, fill in the blank. Then Thursday the 20th, dun da 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 sun enters Gemini at 12.37 p.m. So we enter Gemini season on Thursday and things get real, you know, then Mercury starts ruling the sky, okay? Because Sun, Mercury, and Venus will all be in Gemini and Gemini, uh, Mercury's of course slowing down. So the sky is going to be ruled by a, by a funky, tricky, communicative Mercury retrograde. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Let's see how that, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Then, of course, the sun enters Gemini, and then Friday, the very next day, he has a square to Jupiter at 8.03 a.m. So a lot of conversations, and they could be stressful conversations, stressful planning. Um, since Mercury will be ruling the sky, the sun will be in Gemini. Um, so you can have a lot of stressful conversations in the morning. So Friday morning can get kick-started with like, oh, my gosh, this is a lot on my plate. 
Um, it's Jupiter, so hopefully things that you really like, connections you want to make, collaborations you want to do. Um, if not, then you know you gotta look at you gotta look at you gotta look at why and how you can change that. Um, and then Saturday the twenty second, Mercury has its square to Neptune at seven forty three p.m. So now this is clarifying conversations, but typically through argument. So again, the Libra, the Libra moon all weekend with that square to Pluto is already stressing relationships. The Sun square Jupiter Friday morning, a lot of a lot of stressful conversations or stressful planning, just a lot of things on your plate. And then Saturday the twenty second, clarifying conversations that Mercury and Gemini wants to clear out the Neptune fog and the like. Wait, I don't understand. Um, and typically that comes through an argument. Or comes through something where you're you're just, that stresses you out, like ugh, I don't want to have to have this conversation. Like the fact that I'm even in this scenario right now is pissing me off. <laughs> That's my version of it. And then last but not least, we've already talked about it, but Saturn stations retrograde Sunday the twenty third at two twenty one a.m. So again, when eclipse season's got you feeling wild, frenetic, and crazy. Take the retro. Take a note from the retrograde planets and and Mercury, who's slowing down, to slow yourself down, to gather information, to research, and to allow. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. I hope you have a wonderful week. The week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2021. My name's Graham Breitenstein, your astrologer from Drunk Astrology. Connect with me on Instagram Wednesday the 19th. For Hump Day Hangover, my weekly live on Facebook and Instagram at 6 p.m. Pacific. I will see you all then. Peace out. Mwah. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion? Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.